this is Harriet Grayson, your host and producer, Community Culture Showcase. And have I got a treat for you. It feels like autumn. Autumn is here, getting a little chilly, a little windy, getting down into the 40s and 50s at night. But we've got a classic event to keep you warm and bubbly. Lots of smiles on your face. Bring the kids. I have my friends from Southern Rhode Island volunteers who do a fabulous job helping seniors and the disabled. And every year we have a couple of events to celebrate who they are and what they do for our community. So I have my wonderful guests, the Lindsay, fam Lindsay and Deb Tanner, the mother and daughter act <laughs> that has helped this community for many, many years. There are lots of grateful people we want to thank you for all the stuff that you do. And I've been happy to be a volunteer for, gosh, over a decade, mm -hmm. yeah. doing whatever Deb tells me to do. <laughs> Don't question, just do it, because it has a good objective in mind. <laughs> so, Lindsay, you took the reins yep. just recently. Yep, July 1st. So tell us how, beside the fact that your mother must have dragged you to all the events, <laughs> How you got involved with this organization and what it means to you? So I actually got involved before mom did. Um, I used to go with my grandmother and we would pack the Meals on Wheels because they came in these huge buckets. And they were hot and we would have to pack individual coolers for each route. And I think I was eight or nine years old um, when we first started doing that. And then mom got hired a few years later. So... It's definitely a family affair. A family, yeah. It's like almost like a family business, right? Almost. <laughs> yes, except it's a completely nonprofit, so you can send donations and it's tax deductible. Yes. So do not worry about that. So tell us a little bit about what the organization actually does. So we, our biggest program is our independent aging services. Uh, we take seniors and disabled adults to the doctor. We bring them to the grocery store um, or we will deliver groceries for them. Um, uh, and not just grocery store, food pantries, uh, CVS if they need to. We'll take them to the hair salon to get their hair cut if they need that. Anything that um, helps them stay in their own home instead of institutionalized living. Uh, but we're not going to take them out to dinner. We're not going to take them to the beach. It's things that they have to have to be able to live. Um, so all the basic needs we try to fulfill. Now, how was COVID Im impacting an organization like yours that, number one, we have to say right up front, most of the work being done is not done by paid staff. It's being done by right. hundreds of volunteers who are willing to give up a bit of their time to help other people. Right. So how do, you, how do you manage a whole bunch of volunteers? Uh, so through COVID, um, we definitely saw a large increase in the need. Um, for the grocery shopping for um, people who are isolated and needed visitation, uh, for people who needed Meals on Wheels delivered because they couldn't prepare their own meals, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, but a lot of people came forward because they weren't going to work. Um, so they had extra time, they wanted to help out, which was great. Um, and uh, we ha that's when we started our major food delivery program out of Belmont Market. Um, Where's Belmont Market? Tell the folks. In Wakefield, Rhode Island. Okay. Um, and we uh, changed our visitation program from in-person service to uh, telecare. So that continued. Uh, Meals on Wheels delivery continued. Grocery delivery continued. Um, the only thing that really didn't was the medical transportation. Uh, we did wellness appointments only, but even some of the doctor's offices weren't having clients come in. Right, um, right, right. So it definitely increased what we do, um, and it really pointed out the needs of the seniors in our area, mm -hmm. and it helped show a lot of people who didn't understand before um, what is actually right in front of them, right in their own neighborhoods. So. It's in, very important, um, not only psychologically for the person, mm -hmm. but for society at large, that people stay in their homes as safely as possible. Mm -hmm. 
And I mean, you, you let that happen. I think there's been some push by the government finally to understand and provide some, I think, financial benefit to people who want to stay in their home. I mean, it is so cost effective. Forget about the, even the psychology stuff. I mean, for us to have people stay in their home versus to get in an institution, they're so expensive. People lose who they are as personal, their personalities. I mean, my mother's biggest gripe, we, she says it would be okay in the end. Of course, it wasn't such a good idea. We sent her to a nursing home because she started losing those abilities. And um, immediately, it was like, who always wants to eat at 8 o'clock in the morning? Mm -hmm. Who always wants to eat at noontime? Why do I have to sit next to the same people all the time? Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to go out and I would sit with other people. And I don't necessarily want to eat it. And I sure as heck don't necessarily want to eat at 5 o'clock at night. And I sure as heck don't necessarily want to eat what they offer. Mm -hmm. So. It really is about choice. And, you know, in some instances, the senior needs to go to an institutional setting. But for most of us, if we're asked what our preference would be, it definitely would be to be independent and in our own homes. I'm 65. I hope I die before I have a need to go into a nursing home. I don't. Like you say, I don't want someone telling me I have to have breakfast at between 8 and 9 or <laughs> lunch between 11 and 12. I don't want someone else deciding what my choices are for those meals. And that's nothing against um, nursing homes or assisted living centers or anything. They're serving a need. They're doing a job. I understand that. But what we attempt to do is to provide the individual aging person with a choice. And my choice is to be working and active as, for as long as possible and to uh, pass on to the next realm while I'm out and about, moving around or at home. That's really, for me, the perfect ending to the journey of life for me. I, I don't want to be in a, a, even an assisted living setting where, you know, there's 40 ap apartments along one hallway, you know, and... I just, I just don't want to live like that. That's not my choice. And so this is really about choice. For some people, that is appropriate and that is right and it is what makes them more comfortable. And for other people, it's not. And there are, don't you notice there's been more, maybe even because of COVID, there's been more interest in keeping people at home because, of course, in the nursing homes, so many mm -hmm. people got sick and actually passed yes. away. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, not not at, out of malice. It's just people right. just didn't know what, the staff just didn't know what to do. Yep. Didn't Nobody knew what to do. Nobody the doctors didn't, didn't do. know right. what to do. Right. So how would you expect them to know what to do? Well, I think that's kind of made a reset on our politicians and researchers and everyone to say, well, wait a minute. There's got to be other kinds of outlets for people that are provide them also people needing some psychological help like being stuck in your apartment or your house for days weeks months in some cases years um, having someone call them up on the phone and make sure they're still alive well and and what do you need and i mm -hmm. i think that the organization has sort of grown into even doing more because of what happened because of COVID. It's a terrible life lesson, but in fact, an organization like yours can see what the real value is in, in trying to keep people at home. Mm -hmm. I think the pandemic offered many, many opportunities to look at life, aging, living in our communities, our choices, our independence um, in very different ways. Uh, people seem to have begun to make choices based on what do I want to do in my community? And f one of the things I think is interesting is that people started to look at their community. What's going on here? What's happening for my neighbors? What can I do to make my community better? Because that's where it starts. You may not be able to end world hunger. But you certainly can take care of food security for one person in your neighborhood. You can make a difference and make sure they have access. You can make a donation that makes sure they receive something. Um, you know, we don't, we don't all have the means to, to change all of the concerns in the world. And there are many. 
but we certainly all have something to offer on the street we live on. I think that's just, uh, and, and we, it, it's like the Rhode Island, with maybe the exception of Providence, we're not talking about high-rise living. We're mm -hmm. talking about either um, ground floor kinds of apartments. I know that my husband is a, a driver. He takes people all over the place. And many of the people that he picks up are in some senior housing, which some mm -hmm. of the towns actually have developments like that. They're all um, one story. Uh, and, then, and then, of course, people who are still in their houses, some of which some of the houses could use some um, handyman work. Right. Um, and I know at one time they did have people that, you know, would shovel the snow and do we things do. like that uh, just to help people to be able to get out and do stuff. Mm -hmm. So what do you think now that uh, you've had this terrible COVID experience, when you look into the future, because you're the future now, what do you see? Do you see something changing? Like your mother laid out the blueprints. Now you're in charge. What's the future going to be like? Um, you know, our goal is not to stay in business. Our goal is to not be needed anymore. Um, I obviously don't see that happening. <laughs> but um, if we can, you know help as many people as we can and teach as many people as we can the needs of the community and um, the needs of seniors and, you know, get people more involved so that we aren't as needed as we are. That's my goal. I know that uh, my experience has always been that this is an organization that's completely apolitical. But given the experiences of COVID, I mean, I'm thinking not that I'm asking you to go to Providence and go uh, <laughs> knock on the doors of your state senators and state reps. Um, there is, uh, I think, a need to simply make them more aware. Not, uh, uh, you know, this is an election year, and mm -hmm. everybody's crying and saying they deserve our vote. Mm -hmm. Well, I would want to know what their position is mm -hmm. on things right. like taking care of the elderly and the disabled. Yep. Would they put some money behind things like mm -hmm. this to help provide more food yep. and more other kinds of services, um, to support more visiting nurses going into people's homes and helping them out, more physical therapists going into people's homes, again, making it easier for them to live their lives. So again, I know we're not a political organization, but sometimes you want to just kind of inform um, the people. Right. Beside this hat, I wear a hat as a, a member of the League of Women Voters, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm kind yeah. of pushing this kind of attitude, because we, we take no partisan stands on any candidates. We don't right. uh, push anything like that, but we do push for the idea to make voting as easy as possible. Yep. And part of making e voting easy as possible is to have the issues. We want to vote for this person. Well, what's, right. your, ha what's your opinion on this stuff? And um, so the League is doing a, a number of forums across it, all over the state, actually, with local people like town council, school committee, your local people, to find out, well, what, what's your position? And if you have no position, Mm -hmm. Would you like us to give you some information mm -hmm. so right. that you can make some kind of uh, real uh, decision based on facts or things that you know about or what we have to, after y years and years of helping seniors and the disabled, this is what needs to be done in, mm -hmm. in our it, communities. It so, does. It comes down to communication. And I think part of the challenge is that as we age, um, and Rhode Island's population, 65 plus population, is on target to have uh, grown by 75% by the year 2040. And that's not off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. That comes from a study funded by Tufts Health Foundation, which is well respected. Uh, per capita, Rhode Island has the highest 85 plus population in the entire United States of America. Um, you know, we have a lot of issues relative to aging. We are an aging population across the United States. We are aging populations in Rhode Island, um, a little more so than other states, and in other certain areas more so in the United States. It's not an issue that's going away. 
we are going to age mm -hmm. until we leave this journey. And we are going to bring with us challenges that need to be addressed. Uh, one of the major challenges in Rhode Island is transportation. Mm. And communication is important. And I've spoken with some officials and stuff. Um, I know that it's costly to provide infrastructure. However, a bus route that does not go to the home of the senior, senior citizen does not work for the senior citizen. They're not going out with their cane or their walker in rural South County, Rhode Island and walking a half mile to a mile to a bus stop. That's not realistic. We have to look at the fact that the need is something that is determined by what is happening for that senior citizen. Not by what we want to do, not by what we want to fund, but by what is physically happening. What is the challenge? What resources can we put toward addressing that? And part of the, the communication issue is that seniors need to be more vocal about what it is that challenges them. They have to stop being afraid to speak up for themselves. That must happen. You know, for all of us who are aging, we have to say to our political leaders, to our physicians, mm -hmm. and those people whom we go, whom we support through either our votes or payment of our insurance or whatever it is, we have to tell them, listen, this is what I need. Can you meet that need? Maybe they can't, but the communication has to be honest. Mm -hmm. It has to be, this is what is happening, this is the challenge, so that those people who are in positions of leadership can then determine, do we have resources to address these issues? Or to redirect them or to fund Correct. different stuff? And there has to be an equitable sharing of the resources. For far too long, seniors have been a forgotten population. Mm -hmm. the, the bulk of resources have gone to everything but seniors. Not fair. Right. And we, as you just said, we becoming a uh, larger and larger percentage of the population. Right. And uh, don't forget, although you may think we're not productive today, all those years before, we put money into the system. Correct. We put money into pension plans. It isn't like one day you wake up and you have to support us. We've been working in many cases in, this, in Rhode Island all our lives putting right. into the system. So now... The system needs to pay us back for and the Lin things we need. And Lindsay and I can argue the point that many seniors are still very active because they're the volunteers helping their peers. Mm -hmm. They don't all of a sudden retire one day and sit down and start watching soap operas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're active. They're, you know, neighbors need a ride or something. Or even beyond neighbors, we have volunteers in South County that they drive veterans to Providence, mm -hmm. to the veterans facilities up there. That's not a, oh, let's go down the road for an hour trip. That's a commitment of time. And they do that because they care about their neighbors, because they want to say thank you if it's a veteran or someone who's worked in the community or just, you know, just to show that we are a country based on humanity, based on giving, based on caring, not based on, you know, can I get there before you and beat mm -hmm. you in line by 35 mm -hmm. seconds or something? You know, it's like, sure, those things happen. You see it on the road, people speeding down the road to get there quicker than you. But for the most part, people are generous with their time, with their treasure, and they just need the outlet to be able to go do that. Um, you know, and Lindsay talked about the services for the seniors, but we also have the volunteer program, mm -hmm. which provides those volunteers who do provide the services to the seniors in-house, but the volunteers are also working at other locations mm -hmm. across the southern 12 communities in Rhode Island. This eight little itty-bitty nonprofit, private mm -hmm. nonprofit, serves a third of the state of Rhode Island. It is a hefty load. We don't have any big federal grants. We have one federal grant. Uh, it's about a quarter of our budget. We have no state aid. We live on donations, fundraising, grant writing, and it's the two of us 
who do all of that. And then we have uh, Megan on staff with us helping to coordinate mm -hmm. services and stuff. And, you know, Lindsay and Megan are adjusting some of those things. Like you asked her where it goes. Mm -hmm. um, she is uh, not only dedicated learning uh, the leadership roles of the organization, but she's in there every day helping the seniors too, you know, providing them directly what they need. It's not just the volunteers, she's out there doing it too when it needs to happen, you know, and it's like, um, I'm very proud of her. Oh. I'm proud of Megan. <laughs> I think they're a great team. I think that um, SRIV is in good hands moving forward, you know, and addressing the growing population. Um, and she knows. It'll be a few years. I'll be calling her for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're the development director, and so Correct. we have several events that happen during the course of the year to raise money. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is our March Bowl-a-thon, which has been popular for many, many years. Mm -hmm. This is a newer event. Right. This is our fall event. So what is this? This apple umpkin can barely make it out of your mouth. <laughs> <gasps> so apple umpkin is our fall festival. Um, we've had it once before, before COVID, um, and then that took it away from us. So uh, this year we've definitely put a lot more into it. Uh, we're working with the Charlestown Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. um, so we are offering uh, all kinds of games for kids, uh, cornhole, ladder ball, uh, pumpkin toss, um, all kinds of stuff. We'll have food trucks and craft vendors. Um, and Books, book, uh, children's book authors who will read yep. to children right there and then. Right. Bouncy uh, houses. Don't forget the bouncy yep. houses. Oh, I like bouncy <laughs> houses. Yes. Some yes. face painting. So there's going to be a little bit of everything. Um, are we having a tractor pull? We are not having a tractor pull, unfortunately, but we will mm -hmm. have um, a couple of uh, stations for photos, like selfie stations, and one of them will have a tractor in the background, so there will be a tractor there. Okay, um, all right, all right. Yep, so... Uh, Tell us where this event is going to be held. It'll be at Ninigrit Park in Charlestown, Rhode Island on October 23rd from 10 to 3. Um, and... Uh, well, Ninigrit Park is a big place, so tell, yep. could you be more specific? Uh, right near the playground. Um, playground. Okay, you. all um, right. And over by uh, their pond, they call it Little Ninny. So it's right in that area. Um, uh, same area where they have National Night Out, the police department does. Okay. Um, and then same kind of area where they have Rhythm and Roots. Okay. And, and the Seafood Festival? or uh, mm -hmm. Seafood Festival is on the other side okay. of the park, pretty much. Okay. And, of course, there's tons of parking. Yes. yes. Tons of parking. There's never a problem with doing... We're doing our, our, do people go ahead and, and buy, like, uh, tickets to play the games? Or how's it going to work? <laughs> So there's a there is a fee, but it's ten dollars for the car. Okay. So mom and dad and the kids come. It's ten bucks for the whole family. If you come in an RV or a bus and you bring in, you know, ten twenty people with you, that's twenty five dollars. <laughs> um, it's cash only because we don't have Venmo or credit cards or anything. That's your fee to get in. All okay. the games are free. The pumpkin painting's free. The bounce house is free. Um, all of that. The entertainment is free. Uh, the only thing you would have to spend money on is food from the food trucks. Right. Uh, or if you wanted to purchase something from one of the craft vendors, or when we get into discussing the raffles, we will have some raffles. But other than that, to come and enjoy the games, you get to play all day. And as, keep your fingers crossed the weather's nice. It yeah. looks so far that the oh. weather's nice. Plus, we have... Um, we have some bigger things too, like we'll have a volleyball net up, mm -hmm. we have bocce, we have a giant Jenga game, um, we have scarecrow toss, we have a uh, football toss, mm -hmm. uh, we've got a golf putting thing, we got a little kid bowling green, uh, just all kinds of things so that we don't want anybody to stand in long lines mm -hmm. waiting to play something. Right. L little guys and gals, 
no aren't patients. patient no enough patients. for that stuff. Right, so there's right. got to be something. They got to be able to move around and and be doing things. Um, so you know we've worked really hard to try and make sure that we have a good variety of food trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a decent variety of vendors. You know craft vendors and people that. You can see things and maybe take home a gift for yourself mm -hmm. and that we have activities throughout the day. There are a couple of activities that um, will be, I think, a lot of fun. We have a kids costume parade, mm -hmm. oh. one at 11 a.m. and one at 1 p.m. Because oh. sometimes people come in the morning, right. sometimes they come in the afternoon. Right. Um, we do have some celebrity judges. We have oh. the chief of police. Oh. We have the town council president. And then we have a, a guest judge that um, we're not announcing just yet. Oh, secret, secret, okay. Secret, secret. Secret, secret, okay. Um, and those three people will choose uh, three winners that each will get like a Dunkin' Donuts gift card or something. Right, but right. there'll be a big bowl of candy for the children <laughs> or um, like goldfish crackers and stuff because mom and dads don't necessarily want the kids to be all candied up. So <laughs> there'll be a number of, of different choices mm -hmm. for their snacks uh, so that all of the children will we'll walk something. away with something. Yes. And yes. then the other contest is we have a scarecrow building contest. Okay. You build your scarecrow, you bring your scarecrow, and we will have some prizes for those. And we are asking that you leave the scarecrow in the park as part of the decorations for the following week when Parks and Rec is hosting their trunk or treat event. Oh, okay. And then you can come get your scarecrow after. All right. Um, you don't have to leave it, but it would be so nice if you would. Nice, like to donation, help, right. Yeah, exactly. to help make, the next, you know, yeah, the next that event. kind of, of thing. So Very that, good. you know, there's a, a cooperative going on between us and the chamber having the mutual event. The one added attraction to this event that the adults may enjoy but please keep in mind it is a family event is that there will be a beer and wine <laughs> tent. oh yes. very so nice. you could have a beer with your lunch you could have a glass of wine um you know but we are asking that everybody keep in mind this is a family driven event and you know we will be watching and making sure nobody's overindulging. <laughs> okay, that's great. Now one of the things that you're going to do at this event is also having to do with some auction items that you want to let people know so they can buy tickets. So tell us a little bit about what the public can, you know, put their auction tickets in. So there's a, a couple of raffles. Um, I'll let you talk about the Autumn Breeze one if you want. So, um, We'll have nine raffles. Nine baskets. Yep, yep. nine baskets. Um, and we are going to draw them on three different dates, uh, three baskets on each date. Um, so that will be after Apple Umpkin. I believe the first one is the following Friday, yep. uh, the 28th. Okay. Um, so that one will have uh, a welcome family fall, winter um, Theme. themed basket. And it will have uh, home decor in it and some things to get you ready for the season and all of that. Um, the second yep. basket is on the block. That will have um, some Block Island uh, memorabilia, so t-shirt, things like that. Um, it has a one night stay at one of the hotels over there. Oh, and sweet. it will have um, a gift certificate for dinner over there. And the third one is a Belmont basket. Uh, which Belmont makes absolutely fantastic uh, baskets. So that will have a bunch of different food items in it. Years so, ago, I, I actually won a, a Belmont basket, and the food is... Mm -hmm. Yes. And just in, on the first basket, the uh, winter fall one, we have a gift certificate to Yagu Ski Valley. Oh, yes. that's been added to that along with the sled and stuff. So, mm. you know, there's some s'mores stuff for your backyard, but you also could maybe go tubing or do the mm -hmm. ski lift or whatever wow. with the gift certificate there. Nice. These so. are really nice gifts. And, and how, how does one purchase tickets like if you didn't want to show up at App, Apple Umpkin? You can call our office. Okay. Uh, the number is 401 
502-257-6661. Um, you can mail in a payment to our post office box, which is uh, 1047 in Charlestown, Rhode Island, 02813. Um, and uh, if you want to know what they are, we can send you an email. It's on our website. Um, we can mail it to you if you would like, so you can have a hard copy of it. Um, so there are multiple ways for people to get tickets. Okay, that's great. Um, can people come to your uh, offices and pick them up, or is that inconvenient? Yeah. As long as they call and let us know that they're going to be coming, so okay. we make sure somebody's there for them. Okay, yep. that's great. That's great. And I know these... Um, are very successful. I know that uh, right. this is all donated stuff. Right. Uh, I've donated some stuff for a different a different basket, and it's a uh, it's all these volunteers. Correct. That's how if you can't go and take someone on a ride, you can make a donation yep. right. by by purchasing something and then simply putting right. it in a basket. Or if you own something, you you have a condo, you have a boat, you have something right. that you can lend out to the different people who might win this as a prize so and it's a, and it's a wonderful variety it's like something for everyone mm -hmm. yep like the other six baskets one of them is you mentioned a condo one is a uh, weekend in Newport mm -hmm. uh, there's some gift certificates in there for uh, like local shopping and restaurants there is a two-night stay at the Wyndham uh, Long Wharf mm -hmm. which has a heated indoor outdoor salt water pool Ooh. has a theater right on the premises mm. and it is for a two bedroom mm. unit so there's a full kitchen so you can take a whole family could go you a couple of couples could go um i believe it's the first weekend in december uh so and we are currently uh, working on tickets to one of the mansions oh, uh, for okay. the holidays. So we'll be, we don't have those in hand yet, but we will be picking those up. We also have a basket that's just $150 cash. <laughs> Everybody loves cash. Mm -hmm. uh, that is called a money tree. Yes. yes. We've got, um, we also have uh, a spa basket that has, oh my goodness, it has a, a massage, it's got uh, a nail gift certificate, it's got a haircut gift certificate, mm -hmm. um, it's got these, so a gift certificate from a young lady who uh, is a family member of one of our board members who donated, she does eyelash extensions. At 65, that's not something I really know anything <laughs> about, but I guess it's very popular mm -hmm. with the young folks, so there's <laughs> that thing too. Um, and then there's um, there's two uh, baskets that are kind of sports themed. One is uh, home games. So it's like there's tickets to a PC game in that basket. There's also tickets for URI football. And if you missed it last weekend, I think it was, I'm losing track of the dates. They beat Brown Saturday night. <laughs> in, Saturday night in the home. So they still have the governor's the, trophies yeah, at governor's. URI. So, and there's okay. merchandise in that basket too for, um, you know, local teams. And then in the, uh, like New England teams, we have a signed basketball by uh, New England Patriot player, Lawrence Guy. Football. 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 What did I say? Basketball. Yeah, so, I'm yeah. sorry. Football. So, Lots of sports. You know, well, what I was thinking about was <laughs> Lawrence is just, he's out injured at the oh. moment, but yep. he'll be playing again. Um, we also have uh, merchandise and things from the Red Sox, uh, merchandise from the Boston Bruins, mm -hmm. and tickets for Celtics. So it, that's in basketball and that's football. I like but basketball mind, is right. like my top game. Yes, <laughs> so yeah. that's why I was going. Don't forget the Celtics tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, there's the regional teams in one basket, right? And then there's um, the home teams in another. And then um, what's the one I'm missing? The <gasps> breakfast. My basket. favorite. The bed breakfast. Breakfast, <laughs> breakfast <laughs> is like the best meal of the day. Yes. So this basket has uh, a bunch of gift cards 
to be able to go out to different restaurants for breakfast. Right. It has fixings for breakfast in it. Um, it's got like some mugs and other things and stuff. So absolutely perfect. <laughs> so. All right. So tell us again, how can we get these tickets so we can put them in the basket and hopefully become a winner? You can come to our Apple Umpkin Festival on October 23rd in Nenegrit Park in Charlestown. Uh, you can call our office at 401 552 7661. You can come to the office, which is also in Nenegrit Park, um, and you can mail in at P.O. Box 1047, Charlestown, Rhode Island. 02813. And day of, there's two other raffles. On the day of, there will be a 50 50 cash raffle. The day Only, of Apple Umpkin? The yes. day of Apple Umpkin. Okay. Only people coming yes. will have the opportunity to purchase those tickets, and someone's going to walk away with half of that take. Um, so that could be, you know, a, that could be your Christmas shopping. Exactly. <laughs> and I have to say, over time, these baskets have been. They're just fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it isn't the chintzy little stuff that lots of organizations are giving away. No, 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 no. 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 This the, is grade A. These are valued a. between $100 and $450 each. These are baskets the staff want to win. Yes, <laughs> yes. And we course. can. <laughs> <laughs> but um, then on top of that, a plug for the chamber, they will have a basket day of as well. Mm -hmm. It'll be themed on the seafood festival. It'll have tickets for next year's seafood festival mm. and all the things they do with their seafood festivals. So. Yes, and I, I have to say that there's been this long-term relationship between the chamber yes, absolutely, and, and SRIV, because I know I've been a participant uh, in doing some stuff at the seafood festival mm -hmm. um, through SRIV, and you know we would just put out information, mm -hmm. remind people not to uh, take their beer out into the parking lot, <laughs> <laughs> small things like that. Make sure to get a little wristband mm -hmm. so you can come back um, as part of your ticket to get in in the first yeah. place. So that, that's, that is very important. And of course, years ago, there used to be other events I can remember participating in that you don't see anymore. You know, there used to be the circus used to be there. Right. Um, I don't think I've I've seen a circus in, yeah, I don't know, 10 years or so. Mm, right. You know, so there are certain things, I don't know, maybe change, people change. The, or, the right. organization certainly hasn't changed, but right. mm. maybe they think people's tastes have changed. Businesses go out of business. I think there's not too many circuses around mm -hmm. anymore. So, yeah, that, that has been a very good relationship. Yes. yes. It's been strong, and it's been around for quite a while. There's yeah. a respect between the two organizations, mm -hmm. um, because we do get volunteers to go out to all these festivals, helping with the parking, I mean, doing things that are really yeah. not necessarily comfortable and fun to do, but <laughs> we find volunteers to mm -hmm. help them out. Well, because all of those entities too, like for the Seafood Festival at the Chamber, the Chamber supports the senior services happening at SRIV. Uh, we also do the Washington County Fair each year. The uh, Washington County Pomona Grange substantially supports the services for our seniors. Mm -hmm. um, we've also started to work with Charlestown's Park and Rec's department this year, um, and we've received some funding to support, again, the seniors. Uh, it's all about, the reason we do those things is to help raise the funds that we need to deliver services for seniors. But on top of that, we're also out there supporting community events, tourism, um, which ultimately support small business in our county and small businesses are major supporters of little not local nonprofits mm -hmm. you know and when I say major supporters um, a small business may donate a hundred dollars a year or they may donate a thousand dollars a year it doesn't that does that's not what's important what's important is that every one of those dollars mm -hmm. makes a difference in the lives of seniors in the community and each small business owner is participating in the way in which they can. Um, and that is extremely appreciated by our organization. Whether you are a smaller donor or a larger donor, um, you know, that's dictated by your finances and mm -hmm. how well your business is doing. And we hope everyone remembers that small business owners, they are part of the 
you know, the fabric and of a community. right of your community. Yes, yes, they yes. are the bricks and mortar holding your community together. You need to be supporting them because they're what they're doing is making a difference and in influxing dollars into the community and affecting, mm -hmm. you know, your tax base and ultimately the tax base for these seniors mm -hmm. who are trying to live in their homes independently and stuff. So all of it, we're not disconnected. We're all very connected. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to remember that, that that is what this is all about. And since you've been, this, this Apple Umkin is a relatively new event, Correct. but certainly your, um, your, your Bolathon, which has been around for many mm -hmm. years, I suspect you get year after year, you get the same donors because they feel a commitment to the yes. community, to seniors, to the disabled. They understand that uh, these people are, uh, they at one time were the customers and they, if right. you keep them in their homes, they may still be customers. Yep. You right. Know, you, we send them away, or we, you know, put them in an institution. They're not going to be your mm -hmm. customer. So there's that relationship, which is understood by by these small business owners. Because yep. I know many of them come year after year, yep. Yep. come back to support you, uh, which is important. They, yep. That means that they feel this commitment. Um, also, it's just un unrelated to these two things, I know there's been some changes in your, like, the board of directors. What, what has that done? Have you, I know you've been trying to get it out, out there a lot bigger. What's, what's, been the, what's been going on there? Um, so we've added a few people to our board of directors, and our officers have changed, which um, happens every couple of years. Um, but we have a very strong board. We have a working board. We, they are all extremely supportive of everything we do. Um, they are always there to help when we need them. Uh, anytime I call them, they're always right there for me. Um, so I, I, I envy because I'm part of a non nonprofits and, and you know that's that can be so yep. and that's your mother's oh, uh, yeah. responsibility. She has got these board mm -hmm. members who are going to really do the right thing and, and be involved. I yep. mean, I go to these events and I see members of your board doing things like giving out tickets, putting on rest wristbands. Yep. Coming up with uh, items for these auctions, they've been intricately involved in running the organization, which mm -hmm. is, that's to be applauded. Yes. Because, you know, we get many board of directors, half of them don't even show up for the meetings and stuff, and the other half don't know what's going on. <laughs> so this is, this is quite, quite an important, and it's an achievement, and, and it's, uh, that's a your always, responsibility. I have always subscribed to the philosophy that if you are a leader, you cannot ask someone else to do something you're not willing to do yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be there. Um, it's not always easy. You know, as the executive director, there were many times when I was out and about working and supporting SRIV and the seniors that we support when, you know, I might have rather had been at a family <laughs> party or, you know, taking the day off or something. But um, I believe it's a small price to pay to make a difference in your community and to leave a legacy behind that my life mattered. I made a difference along my journey for other people. So if that matters to you, um, you can do that at SRIV. You can do that at a lot of organizations. Um, I will say that the one other thing that has never mattered to me is I don't care if my name's on a plaque. <laughs> <laughs> I really would rather not <laughs> have that part. Uh, don't put me on a pedestal. I'm human. I make mistakes. I will fall off that pedestal. I guarantee it. I'll break my leg or something. Because, <laughs> you know, you, you journey through life. Some things are successful. Some things you stumble through. Um, and that's what I think... Uh, is really cool about SRIV and, and what Lindsay continues to lead is that it's flexible and there's a place for everybody. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Because we're here to help you right. achieve your right. volunteer goals. You want to volunteer once a year? You volunteer want to volunteer once a month, once a week? You want to volunteer for an hour? You want to volunteer for 40 hours? No, that's not what's important to us. What's important to us is that you feel fulfilled in what you're doing. 
Um, you know, and Lindsay has the energy and the stamina to do that. Um, and I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed. You're not allowed. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, naps in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you look terrific. You don't look old. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, so tell us again, just to remind people again and again, this is, this, they got, sometimes you have to sort of repeat it, repeat <laughs> yourself over and over. Mm -hmm. What are we, what are we doing here? Our Apple Umpkin Fall Festival. Right. It's uh, October 23rd in Ninagrit Park in Charlestown uh, from 10 to 3. Um, we also have our Autumn Breeze Raffle, which you can purchase tickets at our festival. Uh, you'll be able to see the baskets at our festival. And uh, you can also purchase tickets by mailing in to uh, P.O. Box 1047, Charlestown, Rhode Island, 02813. Or you can call our office at 401-552-7661. You can also get in touch with you folks by uh, by the internet. You have a, a website yep. yes. where people uh, must you must have information about this yep. event and all of the baskets that are available. Yes. <laughs> so why don't, there it is repeated. Uh, <laughs> and our website is www.southernrivol.org. That's it. That's it. So that's a kind of a twister over there. But <laughs> no, I mean, this, this is important because um, all the work you do requires a couple of events to happen, mm -hmm. you know, during the course of the year. Yes. Uh, and, and it isn't like you're asking people every single week, every single month for something. No, 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 no. It's a couple of, it's a couple of times a year. And this new thing is kind of fun. I mean, mm -hmm. we hope that it evolves into a true big fall festival, yep. maybe having other organizations join on board mm -hmm. yep. um, to make it bigger. Always when you have the support, certainly in Charlestown, of the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. then you're pretty much guaranteed to have something bigger than yeah. you would have ever been able to muster yourself. I mean, yes. they are... They have an audience we don't have. Right. They're yep. well connected in the community. Isn't the Chamber President married to the police chief? Yes, she is. Yes. <laughs> Yes, she is. <laughs> so there's going to be no problems with uh, mm -hmm. with crime when you go to this event mm -hmm. because it's going to be protected for sure, for sure. Yep. And this is this is a kind of um, different than some of the other things you do because the crux of what you're trying to do is for kids as mm -hmm. a way of getting even them in, a, in, a, in an interesting way involved maybe with their grandparents. Right. Right. Because so. we're helping grandparents, and grandparents, being one myself, mm -hmm. we love to spend time with our grandkids. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And, like, Apple Umpkin, actually, the name, like I mentioned that there's something for everybody. We mm -hmm. had this wonderful volunteer, Whitney, who is a young person who was here for a period of time but is from Michigan mm -hmm. and has returned home to Michigan. She named this oh, festival. Yes, yes, yes. So Apple Umpkin is what... Whitney called it, and Whitney's legacy at SRIV <laughs> is the name of this festival. You know, so there's something for everybody. And, you know, like you said, kids, parents, grandparents, mm -hmm. because we all need each other. We at do. At varied times throughout our lives. Right. It's, it's about being not only community, but also being family. And in the world we live in today... It has never been more important mm -hmm. than now for mm -hmm. us to all stay connected. Mm -hmm. And it's important to um, introduce kids to what it's like, even if they haven't got grandparents, what it's like to get older. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there'll be discussion, I'm sure, along the way about how this organization really is instrumental in having people be able to stay in their homes. And we're talking about... Not you're not a gigantic organization. You're a relatively small organization. Mm -hmm. Very few people who actually get paid a salary. It's the hundreds of volunteers. But it's like walking cats. I mean, you there's a lot of work involved <laughs> yep. in trying to get you know seniors on the path. You even when they want to volunteer, 
um, to put them on the right path to something that's going to be what you really want them to do, mm -hmm. which you already know is really helpful. But, right. you know, when you've lived uh, 75, 80 years, some of these people, you know, think that they, God bless them, know everything. Mm -hmm. So you got to push yeah. them along, get them, <laughs> get them on the right path. Right. So, yeah, and, and I think it's, it's great that you try this intergenerational thing. Yep. Make kids aware of what it's like to get older. Mm -hmm. You know, they might think their parents are old and maybe they're 35 years old. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? So here's somebody who's decades more than that. Right. And uh, kind of show some respect. And it, it all comes from something like that, events right. like this, mm -hmm. kind of cement that. Because I guarantee you, most of your volunteers at these events on... August, I'm uh, August, October 23rd are going to be senior citizens. Yeah, a lot, a of, lot of the volunteers are older, yeah. And, yep. the, you know, and uh, just to give people an idea of what we do, in the month of September, we provided 82 transports. 88? Oh, I I'm sorry, the last, I just, I just the last today. time I looked at <laughs> yep. it, it was 82. <laughs> okay, and then in any given year, we are delivering about 100,000 pounds of food. Mm -hmm. Um, in our Meals on Wheels program, we are supporting between 50 and 60 individuals directly managing uh, routes in Narragansett, South Kingstown, Exeter, and we are providing volunteers for Westerly, Hopkinton, Richmond, uh, Charlestown. We had a volunteer in Jamestown for a period of time. North Kingstown manages Meals on Wheels out of their senior center. Uh, but then in terms of food pantries, it's, there's a lot of rides for people who go there. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some clients that cannot physically go pick up their food, um, so we go to the food pantry and pick it up for them. Mm -hmm. You know, so it depends on the scene. Like, like we talked about choice. Some people want to shop for themselves. Right. Some people can't physically do it. Some people want us to help them with their online shopping, so we place the order, we do the pickup, we deliver. Other people place their own order, and then we just pick up and deliver. So everybody's need is different. Mm -hmm. Depends on where they're at. So can we, the question is, can we address this need? So there's, there's a lot going on. There's between 500 and 1,000 people serviced every year and I say and that number's a big swing mm. that's because during COVID things changed right. it's like mm. um we didn't transport we didn't do as many transports where normally we do six to eight hundred transports a year we didn't do that during COVID because doctors weren't seeing patients however we delivered food to almost 2,000 people right. during right. Just those a change, years. The whole change. Right. And I tell you, the good thing about your organization is because it's small, you can change right. when needed mm -hmm. fairly quickly yep. right. because you don't have 1,000 people to work through. Yep. You know, right. you got three people, mm -hmm. uh, and, right. and then you, know, you set out the word out there. Right. So I think, in a sense, COVID was... Um, it was a challenge, but it allowed you to show yourself. It was an opportunity as yeah, well. Yeah, how how nimble you could actually be, yeah. and turn around literally in a couple of days when you could see things were falling away. Mm -hmm. Doctors' offices closing, closing, and stores closing, closing. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was just absolutely amazing what was going on. For me too, one of the things that. Um, I don't, I'm not really sure how to say this and without upsetting people, but one of the things is that it's not our job to keep people alive. Mm -hmm. That is way above my pay grade. Mm -hmm. That is God's work, mm -hmm. not mine. Okay, But we have the privilege of helping people to age in the process they want. And in the last uh, month or so, we've had a number of people pass, mm -hmm. clients and volunteers mm -hmm. um, who struggled through the pandemic, mm -hmm. who made it, but those stresses and the chronic illness and stuff, sure. they take a toll. And in the moment that we learn of their passing, um, it's sad. Mm -hmm. For each and every one of those people, whether they were a volunteer or a client, it's sad for us mm -hmm. because it's like, 
this is ended. Get to know this, them. The yes. journey changes, okay? Yes, yes. But the, the afterthought is that good, very good. We made a difference. You made you got your to lives do it your way. Worth yeah. living. You know, it was our privilege to be a part of your life, part of your journey for that time. And we have one volunteer who just passed this past month that I am going to ask everybody to wear mismatched socks on, let's do it on Apple Lumpkin Day, October 23rd, in honor of Mimi. Because oh. she never wore a pair of socks that matched. Oh, okay. Not once. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us again, what day is the Apple Lumpkin? October 23rd. Where is it? Nenegrit Park. All right, by the playground. By the playground. Right. Yep. Right. Come one and all. Yes. Bring all the kids, and the kids could be 95 years old too. Of course. Because they can have fun as well. <laughs> so everybody can come. It's generational. Mm -hmm. It's a fun thing for the family to do together. You can be fed. You can even get a beer and a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's absolutely, everybody should put it on their calendar. Yes. All right, great. I'm glad that you came on. I'm glad that we can promote your organization. Mm -hmm. it's we appreciate you. It's such a worthy you. kind of group. Um, and the world needs a lot more people just like you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> thank you, that's very thank kind. Thank you. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Community Culture Showcase. This is your host and producer, Harriet Grayson. I just want to let you have one little uh, thing I'm, up, I'm doing. is my creative writing class. We've been going, not necessarily strong, but we're out there um, on Wednesday, Wednesdays, 11 a.m. It's absolutely free. We uh, encourage people to write whatever they want to do, their diary, their life story, uh, whatever it is that they want to work on. And I give people homework, which they never do, but I don't <laughs> mind. I don't mind. It's at the, no no um, it's at the Pawkatuck Neighborhood Center, right there in Pawkatuck, next to Valenti uh, Used Car Lot, actually. So come on by. Have a good time. It is wonderful to be here, and I thank my guests for coming. Thank, thank you for, for having, having us. us.